everyone welcome back to another session of omni studio flex cards in this session we'll learn how we can use apex rest as data source in flex cards so in our previous sessions we have seen other data sources types as well and in the most recent video we saw how we can use apex remote in flex cards right wherein we had uh, created an apex class and we were accessing the methods of the apex class in flex cards right but this one is about apex rest so let me just first go ahead and give you a, like uh, uh, just just brief you about what is Apex Rest and why do we use it. All right. So whenever you're writing your uh, Apex class and you are uh, kind of like, you know, writing any method and if you want to access that method just within the Salesforce. All right. Or let's say even if you are designing it like a REST API, but you don't want to expose that to any of the external systems. Right. You are only planning to access it inside any of the Salesforce components. That is when you use Apex Remote, right? But in Apex REST, when you want to expose your Apex code as a REST API to external systems, that is when you are going to use this data source type, all right? So let's say you, uh, you have written your uh, Apex class and you are following all the, like, you know, rules of, uh, like, you know, uh, Apex class, which are supposed to be written for Apex REST, as in like, you know, you are tagging it with, uh, you know, uh, uh, this thing, uh, REST resource, and you are also like, you know, providing the URL mapping and all of that. So basically you are creating uh, a REST API, which will be available even to external systems. So let's say if there are any external system, any external app that wants to interact with Salesforce, by making any HTTP REST calls. could it, it could be get, post, put, delete, anything, right? And they want to perform certain operations. Then they can use this API that you would be building, right? The REST API that you are going to create, that, that is something that they can use because you are going to expose Salesforce data, right? To the external applications, like, you know, by this. All right, so basically the, the only thing I would say that you can, uh, you need to keep in mind is that Whenever you are not planning to uh, expose any of the logic outside Salesforce until and unless all your manipulations, implementations inside your Apex method are only supposed to be called and used inside Salesforce components within the Salesforce UI, then you would use Apex remote. But if you are planning to expose it to other systems, then you are supposed to use Apex rest. All right. Now let's just go ahead and see how this can be done. So first of all, I'll, so the use case is that I would be displaying list of contacts. Okay. And I'm going to use this data source and I will also make it available. All right. So I'm not going to show how the external system is going to access it, but I will show you that how they can, right. Using what. So let's just first go ahead and create a class. So I'll go and I'll create an Apex class. So I've opened my developer console. I'll create a class here and let's just start with the annotation rest resource and here we need to provide URL mapping like how this will be accessed later on so here I will just give it as contacts all right and then this has to be global global um Okay, with, with sharing. All right, and here inside this, I will be defining the HTTP get method. HTTP get annotation, and then let's just define the method global static, and then I want to return list of contacts. That's what I would be querying. List of contact, and let's just give the name as get contacts. All right, so let's just query it quickly. And here, let's just give it as contacts. Select ID, let's take name as well, and maybe email from contact. And let's just give it a limit of uh, 10. And then return this, return contacts, right? So this, uh, this class is ready and we can access this 
inside our like you know uh, flex card then we are going to uh use the apex rest as the data source but before we move ahead with the flex card we also have to uh, do the remote site settings so for that let's just go to remote site settings and inside this i would create a new remote site setting and here i would say salesforce no salesforce contact api okay. contact api and here uh, so you need to find your domain name so for that you can go to setup and under domain just find my domain so from here i would just copy this and we'll go back here and let me just copy any of this because I don't want to retype HTTPS. So this, right? So HTTPS colon uh, and these like, you know, slash symbols and then your domain name because you are planning to use it within uh, like, you know, uh, sorry, uh, you like, like anybody who would access this, right? You need to have like a remote site setting. You need to whitelist this. URL, right? So that like, you know, it won't give any errors, like, you know, in terms of that it's not authenticated or like, you know, whatever check they do in whitelisting. So that is why you need to do this step. Let's just click on save. So this is done now. So now if we try to access this, right, it shouldn't give any issues. So let's just go back and then uh, try creating a, let's just create a flex card. So demo apex remote data source all right so here i'll click on next and apex rest next so this is asking the endpoint so the to access see they have already written services apex rest and then whatever like you know whatever you have provided here as in like you know whatever you want to access so you could you can like you know you can have like different uh, sort of uh, mapping right here I can put another slash like whatever you have you are like you know, configuring here that is what you need to provide over here so services and then uh, apex rest and we have directly as something as contacts right so this is done method is get because we are querying the contacts correct so next um that's it. Let's just fetch and see if it's querying the contacts. All right. It is querying contacts, right? There are 10 contacts here. And if you see the JSON file, you can see the information of the contacts, like the three fields that we have fetched, right? ID, name, and email. And similarly, if any external system wants to do, uh, like, you know, wants to interact with Salesforce and wants to fetch data, if they want to do any kind of HTTP REST operations, right? they can do it like, you know, because you have whitelisted the, I mean, they, in their system, maybe like, you know, they have to do the same, but this is how they are going to access it. Like, you know, the URL and everything that we have configured. So that is how they can access this REST API and then um, interact with Salesforce. All right. Now let's just go ahead and display this uh, data onto FlexCard. So here, because it's in a very like, you know, simple tabular format, I'll just go ahead and use a table. So here it is, right? So um, that's all I had for this session. Maybe in the upcoming sessions, uh, like, you know, if you guys have any suggestions or if you have any scenarios, you can like, you know, ping in the description. But if there is something like, you know, complex you're trying to achieve with this particular data source, you can like, you know, comment on this videos, uh, like, you know, comment box. And then I'll try to cover that. But this was like, you know, uh, uh, just for you to understand that when you're going to use Apex REST, I gave like, you know, this was like by mistake, I gave it. But whenever you are uh, like, you know, planning to use Apex REST or Apex Remote, you should know that like, you know, uh, what is your requirement exactly? If you are planning to expose that, um, like, you know, REST API to like, you know, external systems, if you want to expose your logic to external systems, then you can use Apex REST. But if your like, you know, uh, class and methods and all of that is only supposed to be accessible inside the Salesforce, inside the components in Salesforce, then you don't need to use Apex REST. You just need to use Apex Remote in that case. All right. So that's it for this session. And I hope it helped. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.